What's up everyone and welcome to the club. In today's video, I'll show you how to draw and color Mega Charizard X from Pokemon. Let's begin at the top of our page with the eyes. We're gonna start at the bottom, start with a straight angle line going up and out towards the top of the brow. Go back to the inside, we're just gonna curl this around, going out and up. Now we're gonna draw the bottom edge of the eye. From this point, we're gonna step up, curl the eye coming down, then just pull that up. Now I want to create an overlap on the outside of the eye. Stepping in, just rounding this out, and coming in. Let's push the iris and pupil towards the left side. Starting from the top, I'm just going to round this out. Go back up to the top, draw a half oval. Now from here, we're going to work our way towards the left side of the head. Let's start with that fold in between the eyes, going out and up. Move over and draw that again. From the bottom of the brow, draw a straight angle line coming down towards the snout. Now I'm just going to round this out, going up, come down, and then bend that in. And then work our way up towards the top corner of the mouth. Start with a curve going out and up. Add another curve. We're just going to bring this up right beside the eye. Now from here, we're just going to work our way out towards the tip of the flame. Starting up here, curve this up and bend that out, bend this back up, round this out, and then just pull that up towards the tip of the flame. And then from here, we're just gonna work our way back in towards the mouth. Coming out and bending that in, going out and up, and then again, just curving down, up in the middle, rounding out the top, and then coming down. Let's add a couple more bumps along the bottom. Pulling this up, come down, and then up underneath the mouth. Now I'm going to tuck the lower jaw underneath that flame. Starting down here, start with a straight angle line coming all the way down towards the bottom of the mouth, and then round up the bottom. Let's taper this back down and out towards the right, go up, and then bend that out. Let's go back and add in the nostrils. On the left side, start with a short curve going up and out, go over towards the right, do the same thing, and then we'll add a fold along the top. Let's add two fangs along the top, one coming down and up on the left like a V, and then one on the right. Let's add two fangs along the bottom, pointing up and one on the inside. Now from the inside corner of the mouth, we're gonna draw the tongue going out and then down in between the teeth. Bump this out and up underneath. And then we'll add a fold in the center. Let's go back to the inside of the left tooth, draw a straight angle line going up underneath the tongue. Now from here, we're gonna move up and draw in those two horns. Starting from the top of the head on the left, curve this up and in. I'm just gonna bend this around and then up towards the tip of the first horn. Let's taper this back down towards the top of the head. Now I'm gonna create an overlap on top of the head, going across towards the right, and then we'll add in the second horn, going out and up towards the same height come around, and then back in, and I'll add a point along the back, bending this out, and pull this down in behind the flame. Let's separate the tip of the horns, starting on the left, curve up and down, and then do the same thing on the right. Now we're going to wrap that flame along the back side of the head. Let's start from the top of the snout, curve this out and in behind the head. Go up to the top, going up, and then out in behind the horn. Let's continue on the right side of the horn, going out and up, and then bend this out toward the tip, and we'll just work our way back in towards the head. Now with the head complete, let's draw on the right side of the neck, starting at the very top. Just going to round up the neck going out, and then just bend that in. 
and then underneath the chin, we're gonna curve the neck coming down, and then just bend that up. We're gonna add two horns along the shoulder. From here, curve this back down and in towards the arm. Now from here, we're gonna overlap the left hand on top of the body. Let's start with the first claw, starting with the point. Go out toward the left, round up the top, and then come back down toward that bottom point. Let's surround the top of that claw with a circle. Going all the way around, and then just tucking that in. From the side of the claw, curve this down and out on both sides. And then we'll round out the claw, and just pull that up and in. Now from the tip of the claw, I'm just gonna curve this out and up towards the edge. Round this out and come back down. And then on the inside of those claws, curve in and up. And then in between, we're just gonna round this out and then come back down. Now let's go back up and tuck the arm in behind the hand, curving out and then down. From the hand, the arm's gonna bend down towards the elbow and then back up. So let's start underneath this claw, curve this down and in, bend this in and back up. Let's add a fold along the top, coming down and out, aiming towards the elbow. Let's add another spike along the inside of the shoulder, curving in and up, coming back down and out. And then we'll separate the tip of these spikes. Curving up and in, and coming around on the inside. Now the curve of the neck is going to come down in behind the arm and continue down towards the hip. Let's round out the outside of the leg. Going out, come down towards the bottom, and then just bend that in. Let's go back up to the hip, step in, curve the inside of the leg, come in, down, and then back out. And now we'll tuck the left foot underneath the leg, starting from the side, angles down and out, curve in, and then down. Let's add in the first claw. Come down and in, going up, rounding the top of the claw, and then coming down on the outside. Let's add another claw on the right side, curving out and then down. Pull this up toward the top of the claw and then down on the inside. Let's do that again. Going out and then down. Going up toward the top and then down. And then from the top of the right claw, just curve this in and up underneath the leg. Let's go back to the right side of the neck and curve the outside of the body. Starting down here, start by coming straight down and then bending that out. We'll round out the body, pull this down and in toward the inside of the left leg. And now we're going to add that seam across the body, starting underneath the chin, come down around that spike, out towards the left, and just bend that back down in behind the left thigh. Now we tuck the right leg in behind the body. We we'll start by lining this up over on the right, curve the leg going out, bend that down, round out the knee, and then just pull that back in towards the ankle. Let's go underneath the body, curve this out and then down, round up the heel going out and back down. Now I'm going to round up the heel and the foot coming up towards the first claw. Curve the claw going out and then down towards the tip. Go up towards the top of the claw and pull that back down. Let's layer two more claws in behind. Starting out here, go out and down. And just tuck that in along the top. And then we'll do that one more time. And then from the top of the last claw, curve the foot coming in and then bend that up underneath the thigh. Now let's go back up and draw that spike across the top of the right shoulder. We're just gonna line this up, curve this out and up, and then just pull that back down in behind the body, and it'll separate out the edge. 
From the bottom of that spike, we're going to step down, curve the arm coming down and out towards the elbow. Go out and up. Now we're going to blend the finger in towards the claw. So I'm just going to round this out and then just pull that down towards the tip. Taper that up towards the top and then just separate the tip of the claw. Let's add another claw on the top. Going up and then in. Pull this in and close off the edge of the claw. And I'm going to the inside, draw one more. Coming around and down. On the inside and close off the top. And now I'm going to add a fold underneath each claw. Coming down and in second finger and then the third and then from the bottom of the inside finger curve the arm coming down and in pull that in and up underneath that spike now that we've drawn in the main part of the body let's add in the tail starting from the left side of the leg it's gonna curve the tail going out gonna round this out pull this up and then back down in behind the body and then halfway between the top of the tail and the bottom, starting on the side of the leg, add a fold, going out and up. Step down, curve in behind the leg. Let's continue that tail coming down and up on the right side. Starting out here, go out and then up towards the tip and just taper that back in behind the leg. Let's add those seams across the bottom of the tail. Starting over on the left, just going out, just blending up toward the side, and then along the inside, coming in, and then on the right, just taper out towards the bottom. Let's add the flame on the end of the tail. Starting from the inside, curving in and out, bending that back in, and we'll add a point. Let's curve this out and in, and then bending this out towards the tip. I'm just going to round out the end, coming around and then up. Let's make our way back in towards the right side of the tail, going around and in, pulling this up towards the point, and then coming down and in. And now we're going to layer the wings in behind the body. Let's start with the one on the left. Starting from the top of the shoulder, curve the wing going out around the head and then pull that up. Let's add in that large spike, curving in and then down. Now we're going to pull this up toward the top, round this out and then come down. Let's go to the very top of that curve, curve the wing going up and out towards the end. I'm just going to taper this back in. Coming in toward that spike and then down. Let's thicken up the outside of that ridge. Starting from the top, come down in an angled line and then bend that out towards a point. Come in and then down in behind the body. Let's go back up to the top and add those points along the inside of the wing. Starting up here, start by curving this up and then down, curve this down and in. Let's add another point, going out and bending that down, curving down and back in. Let's create an overlap on the inside, stepping out, curve this out and then down, come in and then pull that back up. Let's do that again. Stepping down, out, and then down, just in and up behind the hand. Now the wing on the right is going to be folded back. So let's line this up on the right side of the neck, curve this out and up, bend this back out and up in behind the flame. And then we'll add in that same spike, starting underneath the flame, goes out and then down. Just pull this back up and in behind the flame. 
and it'll draw the top edge of the wing, starting underneath the flame, curl this down and back in towards the side of the neck. Now we're going to add those points on the right side, starting from the very top, go out, and then that in, come in, and then up, leaving a little gap along the top. Let's add another one. Stepping down, curve down and in behind the hand, step over, curve in and up. Now you want to tuck this back in behind the arm. Stepping down, come down and then in, and that's how we draw Mega Charizard X. Now let's grab some markers and I'll show you how to color this in. Let's begin by filling the inside of the body with this dark gray. Then working our way around the head. And then across the hands. And then down the legs. Grab a red and fill in the outside of the eyes, and then the inside of the tongue with this light pink. And then we'll work our way across the inside of the wings with this dark blue. Now with our light blue, we're going to fill the inside of the claws and the horns. we we'll also use that same blue across the flames. And with a lighter gray, we'll fill the center of the body. And then using that same color across the bottom of the tail, fill the inside of the mouth with a darker gray and then a warm grave for the claws on the feet. And there we have it. That's how we draw and color Mega Charizard X. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And if you did, please make sure you subscribe because I'm posting new lessons every day. You can also drop your request in the comments below. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.